Hey guys, so we are back with our geometry, okay? So we're moving on to question nine. It says, a mesal frame is built to help provide some shade to a triangular piece of land ABC, right? So basically, this is ABC the land, right? And then this is a frame that's sitting above it, okay? Kind of like a gazebo. So then it says, ABC, a, B, and C are in the same horizontal plane. So basically says that it's on a flat surface, A, B, C. So there's no sort of gradient. Um, it says A, C is 7 meters, C, B is 8 meters, and A, B is 10 meters. So they've given us some lengths. They've said that A, F, B, G, and C, H are vertical poles, right? And we see that A, F, and B, G are both 3, but... HC is 2. So this is, this is a bit of a slant downwards, right? Which is going to be a little bit tricky when we come to doing our working out. So it's important to kind of realize, try conceptualize the shape that you're seeing in 3D, okay? And then it says HF, FG, and GH are metal poles that complete the metal frame, okay? So they're basically saying these are just um, poles, right? <laughs> basically saying that there is a 3D aspect to this. So let's now see what it says from a question perspective. So it says, calculate the area of triangle FGH, right? So we want this area here, okay? And well, I would color it in, but you know what I mean. It's basically that top plane, okay? So what we're going to do, and I think what's quite important here, is we need to think about how we want to go about this, right? So again, let's have our um, formula sheet on hand, and let's think about using this here, okay? So this is the rule we're going to think of using, the area rule, right? So let's think about what sides we can use and what um, angle we're going to use. So I propose that we use this side here, right? So I'm just going to call that x, and we use this side here, and then we use this as our angle. Because remember, we use the two sides and the angle in between them. So that's what I propose, right? So I propose that we find these two lengths, find that angle, then we can just plug it into that area formula and get the area of the top. That's what I propose, okay? So there are different ways of doing this, but this is the way that I think is quickest and most efficient, right? And, and actually is, is, is quite an interesting way of doing it. So let's think about it, right? So I'm going to use my ruler just to give you a bit of, um, con, uh, like a bit of sort of background to what we're doing. So in order to find this length x, right, we realize that there's a slant here, right, a slant down from f to h, because we know, and let me, let me draw this for you, right, so if a is three meters high, right, but hc is only two meters high, right, so if we, if we're standing there, so if we're a little oak standing here, right, and we're looking at this from a side view, oh, let me just show you that, we're a little oak here, looking at this from a side view, okay, we are going to basically be seeing this, okay? So in order to find this length here, let's make a right angle triangle, okay? Make a right angle triangle. So this is a right angle triangle, this is one meter, right? And then we know that the top would be seven meters, right? Because it's going to be now parallel to the, it's going to be parallel to the bottom, right? So it's going to be seven meters and one meter. And then we see that we can just find pi, we can just use Pythag, right? So that's F, that's H, that's C, and that's A. Um, sorry, A. So we want to find the length of FH, right? So we say FH squared. So we're just going to use our good old Pythag. If h squared is um, 7 meters squared plus 1 meter squared, right? So, and then that equals, so f h is going to be the square root of 50, okay? Perfect. So now we found our one length. So we have the one length. Let's just try find the other length, right? We're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side because it's going to be very similar, okay? Then we'll find y. Then we'll try find um, h, right? The angle h. So let's now find y. So again, we have the same thing, right? Same thing. I'm just going to do that. And then, oh, my, got a very broken ruler up in here. Okay, let me do this. Okay, so again, if I'm a little oak and I'm standing here, right, looking here, this is what I'm going to see. I'm going to show you what I'm going to see. This is going to be G, B, and this is going to be three meters. Okay, that's three meters high. 
And then we have HC, which is two meters high. Oh, sorry, that's HC, which is two meters high. This is gonna be one meter, right? Because I'm drawing it so that it's the same height as the pole on the other side. Make this a right angle triangle, okay? And what is that length of G to C at the, well, G to C if it's at, if they were parallel, so it's actually would be B to C, is it gonna be eight meters. Okay, so we want the length of GH, right? So we say GH squared equals eight squared plus one squared. So it's gonna be GH is gonna be the square root of 65. So now we have X and we have Y. Right, all we need to get now is our angle H. So now, how are we gonna get angle H, okay? Let's see what other things we have, right? So we have two, we have three sides now, because we know that up here, that equals 10 meters, because those two are parallel, because these are the same heights, right? So that's 10 meters. So we've got three different sides, right? So now you should be thinking, oh, we can maybe use this rule with cos, right? And then we can make sure that the angle that we're solving for here, right, is our angle H, and then we can figure out what H is, plug it back into our sine rule for area, and then we're done, right? So this is actually great. So let's just write out the formula we're gonna use. This is always good practice, right? Because it just gives your marker a bit of um, steer as to where you're headed, okay? So let's just label our A, B, C, et cetera. So that's going to be A, that can be C, A, B, and that can be C. Okay, so A is 10 meters. So wherever A is, I'm just going to put a 10. B, we said, is X, which is the square root of 50, right? So we basically can say square root of 50 all squared. Um, and then, sorry, I'm going to say minus 2 square root 50. Okay. No problem. And then y over here is going to be what we worked out over there, which is square root 65. Again, all squared. Square root 65. Again, all... Oh, it's not squared, sorry. Cos h. Okay. Perfect. So now all we need to do is solve for that. And we are doing well. So basically, I'm just going to say cos h over here. So cos h is going to equal 10 squared minus 50 minus 65 um, all over negative 2 square root 50 square root 65. I sincerely hope I've done that correctly. Yes, I think I have. Okay, let's put that into our calculator. Big thing here, make sure that you type it in correctly. I know I say that a million times, but trust me, calculation errors are very common. Okay. So I get that my cos of h, we might have to go back and just check that I've done this right because it's very possible that I have manipulated incorrectly. So cos of h equals that. So let's do the inverse of cos. And I get that my, my angle h equals 82.44 degrees. Okay. So now we've got our two sides that we wanted, and we've got our angle. So now we can work out the area. So now we say the area of triangle, what triangle is it again? FGH equals half times square root 50 times square root 65 times sine 82.44 degrees. Okay. So let us put this into our calculator. Okay, times square root 50, times square root 65, times sine 82.44. Okay, so I'm getting my area as 28.26. Did they tell us what to round it off to? They didn't tell us what to round it off to, so we can just leave it like this. And remember, it's meter squared. We're talking about area, right? So it's important to make sure that you put in units because area is, is very um, specific to the squared units, right? And you want to indicate to your marker that you are remembering that this is actually what you are calculating. Okay, so that's the end of this question. Let's now move on to the next one.